I really want to drop the pretense altogether about kind of talking to people in any kind of a way that uh, placates them or uh, makes them not feel offended by, you know, what I have to say. I really want to bring out a little bit more of what I would consider my real personality, uh, how I would interact with friends just on an everyday basis and just really be more of who I really am, which is somebody that doesn't tolerate bullshit and doesn't placate bullshit and bullshitters to say it in very plain street language. Okay. Uh, and there's a whole lot of that going on in the world today. There's way too much of it and there's way too many people that placate it. And the, because they're placating that, um, people don't understand that their behaviors are completely unacceptable and the things that they support are unacceptable. Uh, I, in other words, I want to make this radio show, if you will, even less politically correct than it ever has been before. Uh, and I want to really stick it to people who need it stuck to them, so to speak, who need to be completely told that what they're doing um, is not only asinine, not only destroying our culture, not only destroying our values, but ultimately leading us into a state of slavery from which we may never escape. And it's wrong. And that's the problem is so few people are willing to tell people that their behavior is wrong. So this is going to like, like, Moving forward, I want to make what I've been doing even more in your face and abrasive because that's what I'm really like on a day-to-day -day basis when I talk about these things. I'll just give a quick anecdote, and I'm going to get into this a little bit later in the podcast. The whole false flag uh, incidents that are taking place in the world recently, the, like I said, like I've been saying, 2015 is the year of false flags. We've had more false flags this year than ever before. And it is starting this gun control debate in society. Uh, and, you know, I, I recently made someone so uncomfortable that they walked away from me in a, uh, in a pub, okay? Because I was saying to a friend, I don't care what people want to talk about and debate on regarding gun control. There is no debate. And when I talk to somebody, when they bring up this issue and ask me what my take on it is, I immediately say, there is absolutely no debate. I don't want to have a debate because here's the bottom line. Are you going to come and try to take my guns from me? Because you'll be met with the front end of an AK-47 if you try it. And I said, so will any agent of the state who tries to do that. Period. The end of the debate. And that's that should be the attitude of every American who values their freedom and wants to remain in any modicum of the sense of the word free at all. So, you know, I'm going to get into talking about some of these false flag incidents later on the program. So I do want to talk about my view of modern society and my take on the whole getting this done through consciousness aspect where I previously really had a very positive outlook towards some of this stuff, uh, my outlook is becoming decidedly darker when it comes to our ability collectively as people who are trying to expose the truth to quote unquote, wake the sleeping masses and get this transformation um, in humanity accomplished in consciousness. Or in other words, um, breaking human slavery, breaking the chains of human slavery through consciousness alone. I am at the point where I do not believe personally any longer that it will be done that way. And I'm just being honest, you know, I'm, I'm being honest about where I stand, you know, in my analysis of the situation that we're in. I think things have grown dramatically worse. I think people are more asleep than ever. I, again, I don't know where people who have a positive attitude live or where they're coming from or what they're seeing. It's almost like we live on different planets because anybody who has a positive outlook about people waking up, I think they hang out with too many people who are very awake and they don't understand how outnumbered people like that are. 
So they're seeing the world through rose-colored glasses, so to speak. They think everybody is like them because I feel they're leading a sheltered life. They're leading a sheltered existence. They're only surrounding themselves with people who are of like minds. And they don't venture out into the world to see what's out there. They don't venture out into society very much. In many cases, they're, you know, they'll, they'll sit behind the keyboard all day talking to people who are like them or they'll hang in their houses or in their friends' houses with people who are like them. And then they develop this mindset, wow, everybody's waking up because the people I deal with every, on a daily basis, they're, they're pretty awake. It's a very, very naive mindset to work yourself into. Because, I mean, when I go out into the public, into society on a daily basis, I see what's out there. And I'm telling you, it is mindless golems out there that have absolutely no idea about one thing that is happening. You could not bring up one topic of truth, one topic of anything that is of significance to human freedom. And these people have not looked into one iota of it, not one microscopic aspect of it. They're closed-minded. They're ignorant on every aspect of what's going on in life. All they know is what the television tells them. They are absolutely shut down and don't care. That's the thing. Not only are they dumb and completely ignorant, they don't care about how dumb and ignorant they are. I mean, these people are just, they are the perfect slave. They are the perfect mind control slave. They love it the way it is in many cases. Absolutely love it the way that it is. Totally identified with money. Totally identified with career. Totally identified with the state. And they want all of that to continue unabated, unchallenged. Because that's their comfort. I'm comfortable in my slavery is their mental attitude. Oh, I... You know, if it's slavery and this is slavery, well, it's not so bad. I actually got an email from a golem like this that said, if this is slavery, well, then slavery isn't so bad. Why are you so angry? What makes you, what makes you so uncomfortable with the world the way that it is? I mean, you have to be an absolute child to think that way. I mean, it's not, it, stuff like that doesn't even make me mad or upset. It makes me profoundly sad that cultural engineers, social engineers are capable of making a human being into that, putting a human being into that mental, emotional, and spiritual condition. It's almost an unfathomable thing. I, I could not have believed it years and years ago until I understand the depth of what was really taking place in our world. Now that I understand the depth of social engineering, epigenetics, mind control, I I realize that these social engineers have accomplished something that is a miracle. It's a miraculous situation that they could take a, a human being with actual potential and turn them into a mindless golem robot that doesn't care about their own freedom, let alone anyone else's. It's pathetically sad. These people aren't human beings. I don't know what they are, but a human being is not one of them. They're not even close to being a human being. Not by my definition of what a human being is and the qualities a human being has. Not even close. So my take on the ability of people who are awake to awaken the masses and get it done through consciousness is and has for actually quite some time been very dark. I personally think this is going to come to war. I've, I've stated this in some interviews, and I'm just going to come out and say it openly, especially now with all the false flag events, with the communist, the, the rabid communist who is leading the charge from the puppet actor position of pre- puppetant president in the, in the White House right now, with the, the new ne- neo-liberal uh, and communist and neocon and fascist uh, you know, puppets that are on the way in, whoever it may be, doesn't make a difference who gets in, you know, government will still be the ruler because people have elected masters. 
I don't think that this is going to be done by convincing people of the difference between right and wrong behavior and that government is violence and slavery. I think it's going to have to happen through, through bloodshed, through forceful revolution. And I went into, in my last podcast, why people are so psychologically afraid of that. It, the main, the real answer is because they are absolute cowards and they wouldn't fight for anything, let alone their own freedom. They don't care about themselves. They ultimately hate themselves. They don't care about their children. They ultimately hate their children. Deep down inside in their own psyche, they didn't really ever want to have those children. If you aren't willing to fight for yourself and the generations that come after you, don't tell me you love yourself or your children because you're a liar. You're a liar and a coward on top of it. Okay? So if you hear... Somebody say, I think physical revolution is going to be necessary. And you think, oh, no, it should never, ever, ever come to that. Well, what do you think the founders of this country did? This is another thing, you know, people talking down this cultural Marxist bullshit about the founders somehow being bad people, you know, that comes in through the communist infiltration of America. Because that's where all that crap comes from. You know, that the founders were setting up this country for slavery. I mean, please. The world was already completely enslaved, folks. This country is the only place where a modicum of freedom ever occurred. Because people who actually cared about freedom actually put down their oppressors. For a time. For a very short time. And the monarchy couldn't stand that they had egg on their face for a short amount of time and they vowed to come in here and wipe this place off the planet through stealth through infiltration and that's exactly what they've done exactly what they've done they followed through on their promise and they always do because they have the will and the care to get done their agenda and yet, sadly, humanity still hasn't developed those qualities. I, I don't want to hear from people who th- say, oh, that's too militant of an attitude. You know, like Samuel Adams said, if you love the tranquility of servitude more than the animating contest for freedom, then go home from us in peace. We don't, we don't want your opinion. We don't want your help. And you know what? We don't need it. It's going to get done however it has to get done, folks. And you know what? You want to you want to test this attitude? You want to test the zeitgeist? The spirit of the times? You want to test that? Go to any American gun show. And you'll see the zeitgeist. You won't see it. You'll feel it in your bones. You'll feel it in your bones. There is at least 3% out there who aren't going to lay down and go quietly into the night, ladies and gentlemen. Bet on it. Know it like you know your name. So I want to openly table that discussion. It needs to be openly talked about. Because this government is getting more and more brazen by the day. What the communist puppet talked about yesterday on the airwaves is a disgrace. And it's all, all these false flags are being done for is to try to disarm America. And you have the absolute cowardly trash European weakling cowards who think America should be disarmed. You don't know what freedom means, boys. You don't know. You couldn't spell it. Okay? You're a bunch of domesticated dogs and you love your domestication and you think you're a man. You don't know the meaning of the word. Think that only government should have guns. I mean, you gotta be joking. 
Anybody who's not vehemently angry about that is asleep. Is asleep. And if you're not talking to these people just like that, you're asleep. They can't understand what gun ownership is for. They're asleep. The information's been out there. They're ignoring it. No, because when your government comes for your rights and freedoms physically, you know what you're going to do? You're going to crap your pants. And you're going to piss in your pants like a little child. And then you're going to go in the ground because you're going to have no means of resistance. You know what? That's not happening here in America. Boys. You know, this whole European attitude, it disgusts me. Just because you're already enslaved because you gave up your firearms decades ago doesn't mean that you're going to lead us into that condition, punks. It's never going to happen here. It doesn't matter how many people get killed. It doesn't ha- matter how many children get killed. It ain't happening here. Know it. Know it. So how's that for some vitriol? Huh? How's that for some righteous indignation about what's happening here in America? Turning this country into a fascist communist regime. And now they want to take what they laughingly call assault weapons away. Assault is a behavior, clowns. It's not a kind of weapon. A semi-automatic rifle is not an assault weapon. Assault is a type of behavior. Can a semi-automatic rifle be used for assault? Yes, it can. So can a baking pin. Okay? You know, this is a mind control tactic to try to demonize a tool that is intended to be used as a defense against government tyranny. And people still don't understand it. Go back and watch my Second Amendment presentation again. The true meaning and purpose of the Second Amendment. Look it up on my website in the video section. Look it up on YouTube. Watch it. Share it. One of my most important presentations that's out there. But you know, it's like once they've taken the man out of a physical body, it's very difficult to reinfuse the essence of an actual man into a male body. That's another thing I want to talk about today how emasculated this society is and Europe is way farther along than even America it's disgusting Uh, it's something I'm going to talk about a lot at Free Your Mind 4 this gender bending you know the emasculation of the American male and the masculization of the female that's how they know once they confuse gender roles you got a society on the road to enslavement Because there ain't going to be no real women in that society. And there certainly ain't going to be no real men. They're going to be weak. They're not going to resist. They're not going to know the meaning of rebellion against tyranny. Because they're cowards. And that's what you have. You have a whole society of men with no base in their voice. Who wouldn't lift a finger to fight against tyranny. They're garbage. And they've been constructed that way. They've been built They think their thoughts are their own. They think the way they are is their choice. It's a joke. You're a joke. A joke that you even believe that crap. That you you made those choices. Those choices were made for you, little boys. You think the way social engineers and dark occultists wanted you to think. According to their plan, according to their specifications, and they built you to spec. You don't even know your thoughts aren't your own. You don't even know your behaviors aren't your own. You're running a program. You're running a program that was written by people you never met and never will meet. Just to go back quickly, these false flags, this one in Paris, now this one in um, uh, California. I mean, it's so blatant that these are scripted events with crisis actors, you know, who don't even display any real emotions, real grief, real trauma. And the news media is just constructing this whole narrative that this is, oh, all just because of gun owners. We got to get these guns out of society. And they're tugging on the heartstrings because that's what they do. 
and they got people thinking with their emotions, not with any logic, not with their minds, not with the logical part of the mind. This neoliberal retard logic that goes like, we need to get all the guns away from private citizens. And so they'll only be in the hands of government and criminals who don't care about laws. You'll take them away from all the law-abiding people who don't want to harm anybody. They'll have no ability to resist the government and the criminals who don't care about what laws get passed. But you know what? There's a segment of people who are going to be turned into criminals because they are good people who don't care about what laws get passed when those laws take their rights. You're not taking my rights. You're not taking one firearm I have. You're not taking one magazine I have. You're not taking one thing I have for defense away from me. Not without bloodshed. And you know what? <laughs> you think I'm the only person who feels like that in America? Whew. Let me tell you something. I'm tame about it compared to some people I even know personally. Let alone probably some of the really, really vehement people out there. How they feel about this. It would make me look tame. A very encouraging sign regarding the sentiment here in America regarding all this crap with these false flags. The day after Thanksgiving on Black Friday, there was 185,000 gun sales in America on one day. I mean, that is like a gift from God itself, as far as I'm concerned. You know, I mean, that's one of the only things that has put a smile on my face in the last several months. That is such a beautiful, majestic statistic that it's just like I'm ecstatic over it. Because what that shows you is there's people who are awake to what's going on and they're drawing the line in the sand. And if you want to get total enslavement done here in America, you are just very much listen to the words that are leaving my mouth right now. Globalists, dark occultists, rogue people in government and military who are going to follow your orders to your own deaths. The only way, the only possible way that you're going to have of leading this particular country into total enslavement is through total war. And you better know that like you know your own name. You're not going to get it done without that. Just know that. And you want to keep trying to bring that dynamic? You're going to get war. That's what you're going to get. So, very encouraging statistic. That means that people aren't fooled by this agenda. Not here, anyway. Some of them are. Some of them are retarded idiots who actually believe government cares about them and is trying to protect them. Like this clown, this commie clown coming on uh, you know, network TV last night just talking like, you know, they're, they're supposed to be our protectors. Really? You're supposed to be my protector. I don't need a protector, boy. I don't need a protector. I don't need or want a protector. I'm my protector. And ultimately, living in accordance with natural law is my ultimate protection. That's what all the protection I need in any dimension of existence anywhere. I don't need anybody coming up and telling me, I'm going to be your protector. I'm not a punk little boy child like you. I don't want a protector. I take that responsibility unto myself like every human being should. This is the problem with society. You got too many little punk boys and girls who say, I don't want that responsibility. I want to be an eternal child. I don't want to have to learn how to defend myself. I don't want to have to learn how to fight the bad guys if I have to. And therein lies the problem, ladies and gentlemen. Weak people. Weak-minded and weak-bodied people who don't want to do what's required to keep their rights, to keep their freedom. No, they want somebody else to provide that quote-unquote service for them. You know what? It's not possible. That First of all, it's not possible for you to abdicate that responsibility. It's always yours. And it's not possible for anybody else to truly protect you. 
That's not what these enslavers in government ever do anyway. All they do is show up after the fact. Ain't, ain't one cop or soldier that I know that ever protected anybody, especially cops. All they are good at doing is showing up after the fact and making things worse. You want to talk about terrorism, there ain't nobody that's ever made any kind of a terroristic threat to me or made me feel like I was being terrorized or oppressed except police, except American police. They're the only people who have ever made me feel physically threatened in life. That's it. No terrorist organization, no terror cell, no radical religionists anywhere have ever made me personally feel threatened for my personal physical safety. The only people in life who have ever done that to me are American police. So who are the real terrorists? Who are people who inspire feelings of unease and discomfort and th threat, duress, in other words? Only people who have ever done that to me in my life are American police. I ain't even worry about gangster criminal thugs and th thieves on the street. Because at least, again, you know where they stand. They're not people who are trying to tell you they're your protector while they're trying to uh, physically harm you. You know where you stand with a common street thug criminal. The problem with government is people believe they have legitimacy in doing the violence that they do. So I want to just get back to the degradation of consciousness in society. How bad it really is. How far gone we are. All the work that people have been doing trying to explain to people about mind control, about dark occultism, about the loss of our freedoms, and what ultimate impact has it had? There are some people, a small percentage of people who are waking up and who are doing good work themselves. But you have this huge, huge swath of society that is just going deeper and deeper into a trance. And the, the mind control is so effectively working upon them because of their absolutely degraded emotional state. These people are literally retarded, literally retarded, which means slowed down. They're developing, it's called arrested development, intellectually, emotionally, and ultimately spiritually. They are in the state of arrested development, meaning that they never really came out of a childlike naive, childlike, emotional state. Because they're not doing any shadow work with themselves. They're not trying to understand the self better. They're not trying to understand the consciousness better. They're not trying to do self-reflection and personal improvement. This is a thing that is actually so sorely lacking. It's not even sorely lacking. It's actually talked about in a negative way in society. Now, oh, you want me to do personal improvement? That might involve effort. Truth? I mean, I've heard people scoff at truth in the time I've been off. I've heard people scoff at the term free will since I've been on this hiatus. Just interacting in people in, with people in society. I have heard people not only scoff at the term truth, I've heard somebody say, oh, that word. I mean, just imagine that. Scoff, like eyebrows come down in a in a... A, a pharaoh and scoff when I said the word truth and said, oh, that word. Like I just said a foul, dirty, filthy word. I mean, what, how d destroyed does the spirit of a society need to be for any individual to hear the word truth and react negatively like that? How much mind control does a society have to be under? I heard someone scoff at the term free will. Oh, free will. You think that's really important. Or scoff at it as if it doesn't exist. Oh yeah, that's an illusion. I mean, this is how totally zombified brainwashed they have members of our society. It's disgusting. It's totally disgusting. It's very, very frustrating and again, I feel more sad for these people than I do angry with them. It's like, you are that destroyed. You're that weak. You're that spiritually dead. You know, how did you ever allow yourself, capital S self, to come into this degraded condition? It's pathetic and sad. And the problem is, 
folks. <laughs> you know, people will say, well, why are you angry about it? The problem is because unfortunately, very unfortunately, and I don't want it to be this way, but I'm not the kind of person that says, oh, because I don't want it to be that way, I won't acknowledge how it really is. This is how most people react to things that they don't like that are actually true and real. They'll try to say, oh no, it's not that way. It's the way I want it to be. Well, I don't do that. I'm not a naive person that thinks I can make reality the way I want it to be just because I don't like how it is. I fully understand how it is to a depth that most people do not understand and have seen the people who are making it like this through their willful efforts to make it like this. People are in the condition of thinking, I'll make make things how I want just because I'll ignore it. If it's uncomfortable with me, I'll ignore it and then it'll go away. It won't exist anymore. This solipsistic attitude. I mean, they actually think this way. That's how degraded they are spiritually. That's how naive they are. 